All right, in this lesson, we're going to do some more modifying of our shape we've inserted and try to turn it into a glass or what looks like a glass. And you're going to learn some good lessons along the way. So, first of all, I wanted to point out that with our stroke around here, um, which is the border around our object, we can change it from having these rounded corners to a more solid corner. So first, let's we have to select our whole object. So, like so. Now we have a properties of the object. And we can go here and s you notice how it says under cap, colon, round, square, or none. So let's switch from round to square. And now you see the difference that made in nice sharp corners on this object. All right, let's reselect the object. And now we're going to go up to color, our color panel, and note a few things in here. Now, one thing to note is, okay, this is our, um, our values for our RGB, red, green, blue. The alpha, what that is, is basically the saturation of the color or graphic that you've inserted. So this is the color we've inserted, right? Which we could change. But we can also adjust the intensity of the color. That's saturation. And you notice it's giving you a little bit of a comparison chart here as you're adjusting. So that's like 76% saturation. It's saying, okay, this is what it was before. This is what um, you're lessening it to. So you could make it a very light version of a color. And let's click outside the box to note the change. So it's the same color, but the saturation is lower. So, and you see that displayed over here also, which we could make the change there also. So let's reselect our object. Go over to color. Now instead of a color, we can choose also to insert a graphical background. Maybe we have a picture or design that we think it would look good filled into this object that we've inserted on the screen. Well, we can do that by changing it from the type, from solid. Of course, none would, would change it to a, a white background, nothing. We can do our solid, but we can also do bitmap. And we'll get into the linear and the radial in a few moments. But we can also insert a bitmap or a graphical image. So let's choose that. And as soon as you do, it will bring up the browse window that you normally see on Windows. Now, what picture do you want to insert as your graphical background? Well, in this case, I've taken this picture, Axiomatic Preview, from a site I like to go to a lot called digitalblasphemy.com. And it, a lot of digital artists submit their work on the site. And they have a whole free section also. So anyway, I chose this one. So once you find the image that you want to insert as your graphical background, double-click or click once and then click Open. I'm going to double-click. And there it is. Now you may not see it represented in here right away. So what we need to do, see how it shows, okay, that's the fill graphic. Well, if we go to the fill bucket or paint bucket, now wherever we click, it's going to fill it with that graphic. So if we clicked inside here, because in a sense, this background doesn't exist. It's clear as far as the program thinks. So we can't fill in the outside of the square right now. But um, that could always be changed. In this case, though, we clicked inside our box. And now we have this really cool graphical representation, basically the file that we, were, we inserted as our background. It gives you a little tiny um, icon of the, uh, the digital um, graphic that you have chose as your fill characteristic. Now, I want to show you something else. Now, we've already worked with the, the free transform tool. We know we can stretch the image out to the right, to the left, make it smaller or larger. But there's also a, a neat little trick I want to show you. If we're going to make this look like a glass, there's a really easy way we can take this um, shape and change it with the free transform tool. So first of all, I'm going to select the whole object again, like so. 
Then select Free Transform, and now we see all our little anchor points like we saw before, where we could rotate it and do anything we wanted with it. But if you click on your keyboard, hold Control and then Shift, so you're holding them both down, and you go hover over a corner, you notice it gives you a little different graphic. It's almost like a barbell here. Now, what happens is when you drag this point over now, it's not going to drag the whole side over. It will keep this top anchor point fixed and only drag over the corner. So it'll slant in. And it'll mirror that exact effect on this side. So when we hold and pull over, you notice how the other side is moving in. Now you have to release the left click before releasing your control and your shift. And then it does that. And then we could take a look at it like so. Looks kind of neat. And you can do the same thing um, in a reversed way. So let's control Z and I'll show you what I mean. I hit control Z twice, bring it back to that. Now we're going to hold control and shift again, but now we could do the top if we wanted to. So basically whatever corner you pick, the opposite corner here will stay fixed or anchored and this corner will pull in. So you can do it on any corner. In this case, if I want this to look like, we could turn this into a lampshade if we wanted to right now. That's what that looks like. But if I want to turn it into a glass, I do want the reverse so I'm going to control Z. I'm going to grab this corner after holding control and shift. Keep holding control and shift, remember, and then bring this in like so. And now we'll click outside the box. See, that looks pretty cool. Um, looks like a martini glass, kind of. Now we may see a problem with our stroke or our border. Remember how we chose those sharp edges? Well, now you're seeing those edges because basically it's like laying sticks down. So we laid a stick down, and then laid a stick down, and laid a stick down. And so you're seeing the edges of the stick. So it's not like a nice flush, you know, corner. So now it may be a better idea in this case if we select it and change it from the square to the round again. See, now that looks a little more realistic. All right. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you about the gradient effect. So first thing we're going to do is take the free transform tool, but we're not going to select the whole object. We're going to select just this bottom portion of the object. Now you see the little dots only in that section. Now if we go over to color, we see that we can change just this section of the object. Both the border just on that section as well as the fill just on that section. So let's say we wanted um, a different color for the fill. See, we change it to gray, right? But it just changes that section. So I control Z to bring us back a couple times. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a gradient because the bottom of glass is sometimes, um, they don't fill all the way with fluid. They might have glass at the bottom here. So I want to make it look kind of shiny there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the border from a solid color to a linear gradient. And now all a gradient is, is it basically means we are fading from one color to another or between multiple colors. In this case, there's three colors here. This color, it's like a dark bluish gray, white, and a bright blue. So. Um, this is a linear fade, which means it goes from left to right or right to left. There's also a radial uh, fade or gradient. And you notice that takes your beginning color as your center, and then it fades it to white, which is the secondary color here, and then fades it out to the blue. But it's in a radius or 
um, circular pattern, as the term denotes, radial. But in this case, we want a linear fade. And I want it to fade from, let's say we wanted it to fade from this color to the white, which looks kind of shiny in the middle, back to that color. Well, if we click on this little controller, it'll tell you the exact color combination value, 16, 26, 61. So then, if I memorize that, 16, 26, 61, and then when over here, I can insert those exact values, 16, 26, 61, like so. Now we've duplicated those two values. So, that's just the basics as far as gradients are concerned. In the next lesson, we're going to actually use these, these, um, these tools to create our, the bottom of our glass. So that's a little bit more about gradients, and we're going to get even deeper in the next lesson.